Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So this is the Xiaomi Mix Flip. This is the global version, which is pretty big news because this is the first time Xiaomi is launching its foldable phones outside of China. On top of that, a lot of reviewers had already reviewed the Xiaomi Mix Flip, the China version, and most of them had good things to say about the overall hardware, but the biggest gripe was the fact that the software was running the China ROM. The China ROM has some China phone specific quirks like delayed notifications, you cannot run Android Auto. You cannot pair the China phones with a Android Wear watch. And you also, when you use the outside screen, you can only use Xiaomi stock keyboard, not any other third party keyboard. Well, all those issues are fixed on the global version. So on outside screen, you can run Gboard if you like, or SwiftKey, any other keyboard. You can run Android Auto. You can pair this with any Wear OS watch. And also there's no more delayed notifications because this is running the global version of hyper os however with that comes a slight hit in battery life but this is still one of the longest lasting flip phones that i have tested and i want to say it has the best cameras in any flip phone yet and that's huge for me because i have been quite honest about me not being a big fan of flip phones because i believe in foldable phones when they're the larger book-like form factor because you're getting two devices in one you're getting a regular phone and a mini tablet with flip phone i feel like you're just getting one normal phone that requires an extra step every time you want to use it this was especially true a few years ago when outside screen was mostly good for just glancing notifications the other issue i had with flip phones was that the camera was usually quite a bit worse than the slap phone counterpart. I'm happy to report most of that is fixed too. Like I said, the cameras here are surprisingly good. You have a 50 megapixel f1.7 main camera. Better yet, you have a 50 megapixel f2.0 2x optical zoom. Now, because it is a 50 megapixel sensor and with a relatively fast f2 aperture, you can also do an in-sensor crop. You get a pretty credible 4x zoom. Just look at these samples here. On top of that, I really love the various Leica filters that you can apply to the cameras. I think Mr. Mobile said the same thing. After using a phone like the Xiaomi Mix Flip, you jump back to something like a Google Pixel and you're a little bit disappointed by the fact that Google Pixel only have one color science and all the pictures have that exact same color science. With the Xiaomi Mix Flip, I can have a lot of different moods and vibes, particularly the black and white. I really like the black and white shots. I look at this shot right here. I think this is really good regardless of any phone, not just a clamshell foldable phone. Now, the second issue I had with flip phones was that you always have to open it up to use it, right? Well, that is mostly fixed here too because the outside screen is huge. This is a four inch outside screen, LTPO panel, gets up to 3000 nits of maximum brightness. You can definitely see it outside and you can open any app you want in its full form. Now, one caveat is that even though the screen covers almost the entire front side of the flip, you can only open an app in a rectangular form. Right corner right here above the camera lens are always taken up by a rigid or some type of secondary information. Xiaomi did that on purpose because if an app is stretched out all the way in a square form, you tend to crop out crucial information. So they're not giving you the option. You have to open an app in a rectangle form. For the most part, I don't mind it. Although the keyboard is very cramped. So whenever you try to type on this, expect to take multiple tries. Like you're not going to get what you're typing on the first go. But hey, the good news is you can use Google voice typing on this guy and that works very well. You have a 6.8 inch LTPO OLED panel. This also gets up to 3000 nits of maximum brightness. This is an absolute top-notch panel that makes whatever is on the Flip 6 look bad. Now, you notice the crease is a lot less noticeable than the Flip 6. When I run my finger up and down through the crease, I don't feel any deep, sudden gutter. This is one of the best crease I've seen on a foldable phone yet. Powering the phone is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with 12 gigs of RAM and a really large for a flip phone battery. 4,780 milliamp hour. This is a larger battery than what's even in the Samsung Fold 6. So Samsung's big fold has a smaller battery than in this guy. Battery life for the most part is really good, but not as good as the China ROM. I am a very heavy user. So if I'm outside for 12, 13 hour days, the battery will drain down to under 20% by the end. And anytime it gets down to 20%, I just get a little bit uncomfortable. The good news is you can charge this very fast at 67 watt and the charger is included with the box. In fact, you also get a case that comes with the box and it's a very nice case too. Overall hardware is really good as you'd expect from a Xiaomi flagship. The phone is really light. It weighs 190 grams. So it's lighter than most slap phones out there on the market and it measures 
16 millimeters thick when it's folded. When you open it up, it measures 7.6 millimeter. I only really have three gripes with the hardware. So number one is that there is no wireless charging in this phone. You have to charge it via the cable. Number two is that even though this hinge, it can stay in place when you're in the middle like this. So you can still prop this up and use it as a tripod. But when you open it up to a little bit wider, like I want to say 105 degrees, it is not stiff or reassuring. It will probably flop open anytime if I move it a little bit. So just like that, like right here, it just cannot stay in place at that final range of angle that the Z Flip 6 can do. But still, the hinge overall is still very nice. It's just a little bit looser and floppier than what we've been used to from Samsung or even Oppo. The number three gripe is that because this is a clamshell flip phone, the thermals on it aren't that great. So I try to run a 20 minute extreme wildlife stress test on the app 3D Mark. This is a test that pushes your phone to the limits for 20 minutes. And the mixed flip, sad to say, could not finish that test. About halfway through, it popped up a screen that says the device is overheating and it shut off that app. So it could not complete that test. Now, to be fair, there are quite a bit of slap phones from even two years ago when they were running Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that couldn't compete that test too. And that is a very extreme test. So by no means am I saying this phone will constantly overheat and become unusable during daily use. Like this is not as bad as the Google Tensor G2, for example, but it definitely has thermals are a little bit inferior to what's in the Z Flip 6 and what's in the slap flagship phones. So I want to make clear, the thermals are not terrible. It's just a little bit worse than the flagship slap phones that we are used to. Now I want to go back to the cameras a little bit more. Like I said, this is probably the cameras that take the best looking photos of any flip phones. And video performance is surprisingly good too. It's really stable, particularly during the day, even when you're shooting with a zoom lens. So even at 4X, I find footage to be perfectly acceptable. And because there's a microphone on the front screen, you can also record yourself taking selfies and get really good audio. And with such a large screen, this is an excellent vlog camera, just walk and talk like this, and you get a clear preview of your entire face and your background. You can film yourself using the outer screen, so this is pretty cool. I can completely, you know, it's a really large screen, I can see myself in now. And then likewise, you can watch videos and make phone calls with the phone closed because there's a microphone on the outside and the speakers are really good. I mean, check it out. And when you open up the phone, you have stereo speakers right here too. On the software front, this phone runs the global version of HyperOS, so everything works out of the box. There is a little bit of bloatware out of the box, including a Xiaomi-specific app store and some extra apps that you didn't ask for, like Xiaomi Community. And also Google has a lot of bloat apps too, like Google Meet is a dedicated app when you can go into Google Meet via Gmail. But you can uninstall almost all the extra apps that you don't want and have a very clean experience. I have no issue with the software whatsoever. So this is the Xiaomi Mix Flip in a nutshell. Now this phone is launching globally, including Europe, but I do not know the official pricing in Europe yet. And if you ask me, I think it's going to be slightly marked up again in Europe. I'm guessing maybe like 9.99 euro or 10.99 euro. But in Asia, if you buy this guy from Hong Kong, or Singapore or Malaysia, you can get it for probably a little bit under 1,000 US dollars. That's all for this review. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. Thanks for watching.